three, fifteen, sixteen. This is seventeen dollars. This is all egg, my dear. Sorry, my people. What's up? It's your girl Adiola. Me and Kolido, we are doing fundraising for Nigeria. Nigeria is broke. Oh, in case you don't know, workers have not been paid their salaries. Between me and Kolido, we just raised seventeen dollars. How much is that in Naira? When it gets to yeah, yes. Thank you very much. Che! Are you kidding? 13 months of no salary? Ah, the devil is a liar. He must it. Didn't their governor contest for presidency? Yes, now Okoro Chan, no be him, they use big, big grandma. Yabi or God, you know, anyhow. There's nothing wrong with the head of state, but there can be something wrong with the state of the head. Mm. My agenda is all about the democratic principle which is government of the people, by the people, and for the people. My people, my people. Who is your people, my people? My... We're not talking about my people right now. How can you not pay workers 13 months? Check. There is God, there is God. You have money to campaign and you did not pay teachers for 13 months. These people have families now. Nah, there is God. Now nah, wait, wait a minute. Federal government borrows 473 billion to pay salaries. Check. Are you seeing what I'm saying because, hold on, let me, okay. Are you seeing what I'm saying because what I'm saying is starting to blind my glasses. Can you imagine? Now we are back to borrowing, that is $2.3 billion, so now we are borrowing money to pay salaries. Jay, I can't see. It has gotten this bad. Nigerians, how much do we owe now, eh? About, say, hello? 10 trillion, ten, that is how much we owe, both our uh, internal and external, de 10 trillion naira already. Ah, you know, I pity this incoming government. Eh? This is Madam Nguzi talking, by the way. As you know, I have been honest with you since the current economic problem started. Huh? Mm. We have serious challenges. Things have been tough since the beginning of the year. Oh, God. I beg, I beg, enough of this story, eh? What does she mean by uh, she's been honest with us? Isn't this the same woman insisting that Nigeria is not broke? As of last month, this madam was on CNN saying that we are not broke. Now she's like, I've been honest with you. What? Who is the saving who? <laughs> not only have we been owing salaries, by the way, we are also owing oil marketers. In the last two weeks, some people bought petrol for 300 naira per liter. 300 at black market in Lagos. In fact, 6,000 naira for 10 liters of petrol, making it 600 per liter. But you know, I really don't understand this Nigerian officials. Instead of us paying so much money to oil marketers, why don't we just spend that money on, even if it is one refinery, and fix it? Dialoguing with them all along, we paid them 350 billion in December. We paid them 31 billion for ferry foreign exchange differentials. And by tomorrow, we will be paying them the 100 billion for which we gave them IOUs, as well as their interest rate differentials. Uh, of 56 billion. My people, how many billions are we paying all your marketers? Hey! The devil is a liar. I didn't know it's this serious. 350 billion in December, plus 31 for foreign exchange differentials, another 156 billion. Che! You know the way the madame they call billion self, they make my body shock as if it's just nothing. Eh? We paid them 350 billion in December. We paid them 31 billion for ferry foreign exchange differentials. You mean you paid 537 billion naira to oil marketers just between December and now? Oh my God! How much is that? 2.6 billion dollars. Yes! Two, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. I'm, I'm really confused because I read in Punch newspaper in February of this year that it would cost foreign engineers 1.6 billion to fix our three refineries in Wari, Kaduna, and Port Harcourt. Just 1.6 billion dollars. So, so why don't we do that and get rid of middlemen, I mean oil marketers who buy a crude oil at really really cheap price and then ship it out to other countries to refine it and import it back and sell it back to us at ridiculous prices 537 billion naira what listen to the executive director of refining and petrochemicals at nnpc mr ian udo for the three refineries the estimates going with the nominees of the original builders of the refineries would have come to 1.6 billion dollars take note of the word original builder so by the way but we cannot afford that because we're not going to get any funding from the government for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they decided to contract out our refineries to local engineers at $550 million. All three refineries. Mm -hmm. I 
mean, is it safe for me to say that instead of doing a good job of fixing our refineries for $1.6 billion, NNPC wants to save money, so they decided to contract it to Nigerian engineers for $550 million. I'm not saying that Nigerian engineers are not good, but how would local engineers do a better job than the original builders? You know, they said those were the original builders. Why do we like cheap things in Nigeria? No money at NNPC and $20 billion disappeared. Eh? Who are you deceiving? Eh? What is this? Huh? Managing Nigeria's economy has made me develop high blood. Ah! Girl, please. I read something about cancer as well. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Nigerians, you should really pity this woman, Madam Ngozi. You should pity her for. <laughs> And what, what is the meaning of that? <laughs> eh? What is wrong with you? You this boy. You oh dear, moju. Whatever you want to do, do it after. This is a serious issue now. This woman has sacrificed even her health for the betterment of Nigeria. Eh, listen to what she said now. 70% of my staff have high blood pressure. <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh, okay? <laughs> that 70% of the people we have in charge of our money have high blood <laughs> high blood pressure. We now have a clinic so that people can go for checkup quickly when they start having headache before someone collapses. <laughs> so really you need to fit in Madame Ngozi. I mean, look at that. It, it was so bad they had to build their own clinic for them at the Ministry of Finance. Eh? <laughs> Speaking of which, my people, someone that you should all pity right now is Mr. Goodluck Ebele, Jonathan, you know? He said Astorok has been deserted. Even Mama Peace, Mama Patience has been missing in action. You know, as soon as Ogadjo not lost, that woman just disappeared, though. Hmm. You know how she was campaigning left and right during elections? She was the original spokesperson for PDP. That if only if you are in the labor world, try picking, picking, you won't die. I won't die. Let me go and vote and come back. She wasn't at this uh, presidential breakfast where Mr. Jonathan made that statement that he's been deserted, yes. And I didn't see her at the funeral of Mr. Oronto Douglas with uh, Mr. Jonathan. What the? What in the what? I thought this was the time that Madame would stick close to her husband. You know, there is God now in anything we are doing. Don't worry, Mr. Jonathan. Some of us will always remain loyal to you. Whatever happens, give me my glasses. My Jonathan's mother applauds JTF for donating both. Chai, my father and my God. What in the what? You mean to tell me that in six years of presidency, common water or God do not did not take care of in his mother's hometown in Bayelsa? Ha, Lord, Lord, no, I'm starting to feel something. Please don't beg me. Don't beg me, or God, you know? How dare you? You did not take care of the whole country and you did not take care of your own people as well. Ah, I'm disappointed. Forget about pity. Right now, I'm upset. Please don't beg me. JTF. Joint tax force, they are now the one donating Boho. Boho in 2015, Habba. That is a shame now, my yoga. Wait a minute. If truly this is the hometown of JEJ, in what way has having their son as president benefited this women? Che! Oluwa call it the wo. Call it the wo be my Oh, if you if he died. You know you are stepping on my toes. I already why do you have to do this? Eh, who sent you? Why put insults upon injury? I beg, I beg, take the photo down. Meanwhile, my yoga is not very good now. Because we know that you bought a whole island to yourself. Yes, ah, we know what is going on. What will you alone do with all those buildings on the island? And is it gonna be self-sufficient? You will have your own petrol station, your own bank, your own everything, like kind of like in South Africa. Eh? But you know, on a serious note, there's something I need to tell you. Okay, my Oga, people are talking. You know, Nigerians, you know how they are. They've started, you know, big mouths. They've been talking. They are saying that the way you've been firing people anyhow and appointing new officials at the last minute, they are asking what is going on now. Huh? People are saying that maybe you have an agenda. Hey, Oga, you know, you can always talk to me. Because people are saying that you are trying to put your own people in strategic places. You know, there is God. Me, I'm praying for PDP because I know about all the fights that has been going on. People blame me each other for losing election. Yes, by the way, I saw your statement that all the people that ran to APC, they will come back to PDP hungry. <laughs> 
Ogadjo, no, it will me and you, Ogadjo. No, some things should not be said at all. You, you know, as I was saying, yes. I've been following this drama. I don't know what is happening oh, in PDP. They've just been accusing each other. You are the reason we lost election. Some people are saying it's because of Mama Patience. I said, Abba, how can you blame a woman? You have no shame. Blame Mama Patience for losing the election. There is God now. Nah? Eh? In fact, I heard that uh, the PDP chairman, Mahazura, because of this wahala, I heard that the man ran out of the country. PDP, eh? put yourself together. Instead of blaming each other, why don't you think about developing Nigeria? If you had acted well, Nigeria should have voted for you. Eh? Me, I'm praying for PDP as a good citizen. I'm praying for you guys. But you all know I don't know anything. You didn't hear anything from me. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Burundi, yes, yes, the protest is still going on because Mr. President Nkurunziza has insisted on running for third term by fire by force. Do you guys know that more than a dozen people have been killed? At least 13 people have been killed. And the man is still insisting. In fact, I was so upset this week when he addressed his people and he said, okay, I hear all your cries. I promise that if you let me do third term, I will not do fourth term. I was like, che. Thunder will fire you. Look at this man who is talking about fourth time with you. People are saying no to third time and he's talking about fourth time. I mean, this is a typical example of the saying that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Did you guys know that the vice president of Burundi's constitutional court, that is a top judge, one of those that were supposed to decide on the legality of Mr. President's nomination for a third time, fled the country. The man fled the country. He said the pressure was too much on him and some other uh, judges at the constitutional Constitutional court, they just wanted them to approve Mr. President's intention to run by fire by force. He said he was even getting the death threat. But as soon as the man left Burundi, though, I heard that the other judges ruled that Mr. President's third term bid is legal. Apparently, four of those judges were forced to approve it. Of course, the protest continues. Uh, one person was burnt alive this week. Some people are saying that he was burnt by protesters. Others are saying that he was burnt by a militia group and that they are trying to frame the protesters. I spoke with a Burundian activist this week here in the US and he told me that Mr. President actually trained a militia group that is now killing and intimidating those opposing his intention for re-election. Someone else wrote me by the way and said this is actually a Hutu Tutsi issue. Not at all. There have been reports over a year ago that the ruling party has prepared some militia group called Imbonerakure. They were taken to Congo to receive military training in case the elections do not go in their way, their favor, or in case there's resistance, all these in Bonerakura group will resist. Wow, can you imagine that? I mean, this was the same president that was advocating for peace between the Hutus and the Tutsis. Now, no transportation, a lot of people are stranded in Burundi. Not only has the president banned social media, but I heard that even the use of cell phones have been banned in many places in Burundi. Primary school students were supposed to write their entrance examination into secondary school. Many of them were not able to write their exams this week because of the ongoing protest. But why are other Africans quiet about this. That's what I don't know. Although I heard that the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon asked the president of Uganda, uh, Yoweri Museveni, to intervene. I was like, what? Like, no, 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 seriously, that must be a joke. Um, Museveni has been there for like, how many years? 29 years. He's been ruling Uganda, even though he used to yab African leaders for staying too long in power. And then, you know, I happened to read that the UN denied it. I was like, yeah, they better deny it because that would not be good. Anyway, the first lady of Burundi, who is a pastor, like I told you last week, uh, the woman has said nothing despite the number of lives lost because of what her husband wants to do. I heard that she's still going to church to pray instead of talking to her husband. I'm like, what? Just talk to your organ now. Tell him to step down. Is it by fire by force? Eh? Both of them are insisting that it was the Lord that anointed her husband. But the Lord can also anoint other people as well. Eh? Don't be so. But you guys know I don't know anything. We'll see what happens with this uh, coming election in Burundi. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So a few weeks ago, I told you guys that the last couple of weeks have been very difficult for the people of Ethiopia because some of them were beheaded by ISIS in Libya, others were also attacked, even killed in the xenophobic attack in South Africa, and some Ethiopians were also stranded in Yemen. Only for me to hear that after the beheading of the Ethiopian Christians in Libya, that the government communication minister of Ethiopia told Associate Press that 
if the story is confirmed i'm like whoa what do you mean if like really anyway he said that if the story is confirmed it will be a warning to people who wish to risk their lives to travel to europe through dangerous route i'm like what how does that help anybody do you know why people are endangering their lives you think they don't know that this is dangerous anyway that response pissed off a lot of family members of those that were killed and of course a lot of ethiopians all over the world so people started demonstrating in the capital addis ababa so the ethiopian government staged their own demonstration the next day they brought their own supporters by buses to a place called the mezcal square and blocked the population of the city outside of the square at some point even those that were brought in to support the government joined the real protesters to boo the prime minister when he was speaking and some of the officials that spoke as well now the worst part of this is that as soon as the speeches were over police brutality began many people were injured and then they used that opportunity opportunity to imprison a lot of the opposition members, especially young people. So you can imagine how pissed off a lot of people were in Ethiopia. Now before that happened, the US Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, uh, the fourth ranking official in the US Department of State, that is Miss Wendy Sherman, apparently went to Ethiopia in April of this year. And when she was there, she said everything is great and that they are practicing true democracy. Ethiopia is the fastest growing economy, one of the fastest growing economies on the African continent. Uh, Ethiopia is a democracy uh, that is moving forward in an election that we expect to be free, fair, credible. Ethiopia has moved forward in strengthening its democracy every time. There is an election, it gets better and better. Guess what? Ethiopians, especially those that were outside Ethiopia, they were like, what in the world is she talking about? They went to the State Department to protest her statement. EPLF regime has never been elected by the Ethiopian people. Uh, Under Secretary Wendy Sherman, your recent trip to Addis Ababa, to our, to our own land, especially your reckless speech has broken the heart of Ethiopians. Yes. 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 You should publicly recant the statement that you made in Addis Ababa and uh, do apologize for the Ethiopian people or immediately and unconditionally resign your place for Ethiopia. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. now if Ms. Sherman is not aware of the recent protest, the one that I just talked about, you know, that happened uh, in Addis Ababa, at least she should be aware of the case of Andagacho Sege, that prominent opposition leader who was illegally detained in Yemen while traveling. Uh, you know, I talked about him before, even though he was traveling with UK passport, he's a UK citizen as well as Ethiopian. The man was handed over to the Ethiopian authorities and he's been in prison now since June of last year with no trial by by the way how is that supposed to be a democratic government like really miss Sherman? how do you think that his family is doing according to the committee to protect journalists this government of ethiopia has imprisoned 19 journalists that's more than any other country in africa and ethiopia ranks number four on cpj's list of top 10 most censored countries in the world don't forget the bloggers who were arrested last year and jailed without trial that is the zone 9 bloggers i've talked about them several times on this show at least six 16 journalists have been forced into exile and a number of independent publications have shut down due to official pressure. A lot of Ethiopians are saying that the US government is intentionally looking away from the human rights issues in Ethiopia and going by the words of Ms. Sherman herself, uh, she said Ethiopia is a valuable partner in a critical region from peacekeeping to fighting Al-Shabaab to pursuing peace in South Sudan. So she came out, she said she's aware of some of the atrocities in Ethiopia but you guys know that I don't know anything. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Uh, before I leave today, I like to read some of your emails. And the first one is from Hamza Bindiwa. And he says, Hi Adiola, we the people of Fage local government, we want you to please tell everybody that we don't have electricity for over two weeks and we've experienced the hottest weather in Kano. Wow. Thank you and greetings to Kole Dowo. What? For two weeks? How can you not have electricity for two weeks? Like really, I hope that somebody in Kano is watching this that can help this community, the, the people of Fage local government. So please, please help these people, eh? 
<laughs> you know, I do it. Seriously, do I hope somebody will help them out. Here, you understand. The next email is from Okoyemi Akanji, and he told me a really long story, which I won't read everything, about something that happened in a Lara community in Ogun State. The story was also published in Punch, by the way. It's the story of a school that had been built in 1955. Can you imagine a primary school built since 1955? Now, the building got so old that the parents decided to contribute money so they can build another building, and the government built them another building. But for some weird reasons, they refused to allow the children to go into the new building, saying that they needed to commission it. So they waited until the old building that was built in 1955 collapsed in February of this year and a little girl was killed in that incident. Can you imagine how horrific that is? The building was completed. And then he said that, what makes me write this email to you is that the commissioner of education did not show any empathy for the bereaved parents. He said, and I quote, the new building was recently completed and there is a procedure to be followed when a building is completed. The contractor will have to file notice, among other things. Can you imagine that? Instead of just admitting that they were wrong in not letting the children go into the new building, he's coming up with excuses. Apparently, they were trying to put up a big ceremony of, oh, we commissioned a new building, and they waited until the little girl was killed. I really appreciate the person that wrote me. He said that we are hoping that this family will get justice for the injustice done to them by this Carlos government. Uh, first of all, we shouldn't still be using buildings that were built in 1955 in Nigeria as a school building. It's very dangerous because we maintenance is not part of our dictionary. It's not that buildings cannot last for hundreds of years but when we don't maintain anything and we are still using these buildings it's very very dangerous i hope that something is done for this family to get justice and the government needs to take responsibility for their failure to allow the children to go into the new building our next email is from suka yiko and this person says hi adiola my name is suka i'm a medical student currently studying in hungary under the scholarship scheme of my state river state my sponsors at the river state sustainable development agency and for over six months we have not been paid our allowances wow wow we've tried to find out the problem but they said that they have no funds what they, they got money what does that mean they have no funds this is the river state the hometown of mama patients the devil is a liar but we believe that these funds are being diverted to other things mm -hmm, me too my brother some of us here have been displaced our schools have given us ultimatum and things are getting worse please adela help us to broadcast this to the world we are suffering Please, we need help. Wow, my heart breaks reading this. Like, for real, can somebody in River State remember their promise to these students and help to fulfill it? They are stranded and hungry. How do you expect them to survive? The school is kicking them out, and the money is there. I mean, we saw how much money you were spending during the elections. River State, please, Mama Patience, this is an opportunity for you to advocate for people of your state. And, you know, as the first lady, you know, do well. Please speak for these students. And there is God in everything that we're doing, River State. Don't forget this student. The world knows six months, six months with no allowance. <laughs> There's God though. And you know, many of them probably don't have work permits because they don't always allow international students to work. Our next email is from Rotimi Morak and he also goes by the name Timi Morak. And just to cut the long story short, I found out that this man lost three of his children in one day in an auto accident in Brooklyn. This happened 17 years ago. He lost three children yes these are their pictures it was very very hard on him he has a daughter left and it's just been him and his uh daughter since then it's been very difficult for him he had to move out of new york you know just to get over uh everything that happened but in honor of these three children he decided to start a foundation that would help people that have sickle cell himself is a survivor of sickle cell and so he wanted to help people with sickle cell especially in nigeria and he has started doing it yeah he's been to nigeria he got himself a land he's trying to build uh, a, a building to treat sickle cell uh patients right now he's helping a woman who was kicked out of her house when the husband found out that she uh, she has sickle cell so he sends money to her every week for her upkeep uh, as well as medical care she's presently re receiving medical care and um he's doing all this with his personal money but now he's trying to expand it and he's doing this all in honor of his children they are the ones that he called the morak children so please if anyone would like to be a part of what this man is doing changing lives uh this is how you can contact him you can do your own research about him before you do anything but he has a fundraising event coming up in june in new jersey 
easy and anybody can buy a ticket at $50 per seat and he's because he's trying to raise $10,000 for the building that he's building in Nigeria and also uh, to, to take care of people with sickle cell. So please, if that's you and you would like to make a difference, for $50, you can actually make a huge difference. There will be a lot of cultural events that day, and they will also educate people about sickle cell. All kinds of things will happen that night. It will be a wonderful night in New Jersey. Even if you're not in New Jersey, you can be part of this. You can still buy a ticket in honor of what he's doing. His name is Roti Mimuraki, or you can call him Timi Murak. Our next email is from Fami Mtiza, and she says, Hi, Adiola. I would like to tell you that what you said about our president of Burundi is not true. Please try to tell us the truth because our president have done more things for us. We are thankful. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Fami Mutiza. Um, I actually wrote her back asking for the good things that the president has done, apart from what I talked about last week, if she can send me more. And I'm yet to hear from her. Maybe I will after this episode. But the main issue right now, Ms. Fami, is the fact that he's trying to impose himself on his people by running for third term. And that's what everybody is condemning. That's what I'm condemning myself. I don't know how you can justify that, uh, the fact that he's trying to run for third term. But once again, thank you very much for writing. I really appreciate it. And my very last email is from Albert. And he says, Hi, Adiola. I was very surprised to see what you do. It is very interesting. So I wish you could go again deep into the situation that is occurring now in Burundi. I am Burundian and it is where I live, precisely in Bujumbura. Funny things are really occurring and after listening and watching your TV emission, I automatically realized that the international community can learn more on what you present. For example, today people have been burnt in Burundi. That is representing what we were living in 1993. Maybe this guy who is trying to use force will see what can be the end and also his pastor wife can probably do something. May God help you. Uh, regards. Thank you very much, Albert. I feel vindicated because someone just accused me of lying about their president and another person from Burundi was like, hey, a lot of things have happened after what you said. We're still hoping that Mr. President will graciously back out, but he's still insisting, which is very, very sad. Um, so thank you very much for writing. I really appreciate that. So that's all the time that I have for emails today, but I want to thank everybody that watched last week's episode where I talked about this young man that has been stuck in the hospital in India for over a year. I could not believe it, but some of you guys have donated. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. They called me. They said someone donated 10,000 Naira to their GTB account. Somebody else donated 20,000 Naira. And I'm sure that it's possible that some people have paid to the hospital's account directly. I really, really appreciate this. I mean, this will go a long way. At least they feel a bit relieved knowing that some kind of money is coming in. Thank you so much. And if you're yet to donate and you would like to be part of this, please, this is his information. Like I I said I have a story on my blog at the Lafayette.com. You can read more. You can read more about this young man that has been in the hospital for over a year and has been through more than three different surgeries. All right, guys, that's all the time that I have for emails today. Please keep sending your emails to adela.keepingareal at gmail.com. All right, y'all, it's been real, and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Until next week, I'm gonna see y'all later. Peace out. Welcome to Fosby Luxury Hotel. At Fosby Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24-hour power supply, poor condition, free international calls, free tire pumping service, and free car battery charge. So what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fosby Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one, Adeli Ramba Michele, off Raja Rasaki Road, First Estate, Amuo, or the first start Vegas. For more information or reservation, please call us on 080 75 or 080 90 You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.forcevhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Forcevhotel Hotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.